Hey, what's up? It's Brian Scalabrini, the White Mamba, also 2008 world champion Boston Celtics. Now, you're listening to the Boston Big Three podcast presented by Ride the Wave Media. Welcome back to Boston's Big Three, presented by Ride the Wave Media. We're here for our 90th episode. Got Spike King, Jay Lassard, and myself, Brandon Watabi. So uh, let's just jump right into it, boys. It was a what are your what do you got? Opening thoughts. What do you got? What do you got? I just want to start off because I haven't been on the uh, podcast in a while, and my opening take is I just want to say my day with Watabi. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. Uh, for those who don't know, he flew out from Arizona to Tampa for Celtics Raptors for a few hours for a few literally flew <laughs> out here in the morning, uh, picked them up at the airport at 11, dropped them off at the airport four o'clock the next day in the morning, uh, but took him to the beach, it's took him uh, to get some uh, some I don't know what you ate. It was a weird looking. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even remember what that was. <laughs> yeah. I literally, I took him to a speakeasy in downtown Tampa in Ybor City. That was probably the weirdest place. It was him like a I've ever haunted been to. something. Yeah, it was herbs it was, from it was, Southeast Asia. It was real weird, but uh, we got to see the Celtics play live and in person. So shout out GRD, you fake fan. I am a bigger Celtics fan than you will ever be. And uh, I just want to say it was a great time, uh, you know, finally meeting you, my dude, being able to uh, show you around Florida and the beach and everything. I had a fucking blast and you were more than welcome anytime. anytime. You and me both. That was that was a great time. We, I, I only talked about it for like maybe two or three minutes on here when uh, right after that happened. But that was a great, great trip. Great memory for uh, for the Celtic season, because I, I don't know many people that have gone to Celtics games this year. You and me are the only two, I think. <laughs> Babs, opening opening thought. And Balcony Boa, too. Tampa's the place oh, to be oh, right, right now. Yeah. Tampa um, is. My opening take, Aaron Rodgers is not a top 10 quarterback of all time. Anybody that has Aaron Rodgers on their top 10 list, he's done. It's over with. This past Sunday just proved it. He's won in four NFC title games. He's won one Super Bowl. He's, he's the MVP of the season. I get it. But what's happening, people, is when you end your career, your name gets etched in stone. This is where you are. So when you talk about Tom Brady for a second, this guy right behind me, wherever he is, I'm using a little virtual background today. His name got oh, wait, etched. No, I thought you were really just. <laughs> no, he was really there. He was at the. <laughs> His name was etched in stone the second he won Super Bowl 51. And, and to my I look at that and say, like, that's he's number one. No one's gonna pa- pass him. And when you guys got you guys, uh, you got got guys like Montana and Manning, their names are etched in stone. They don't move. You don't move on a list, and you might move down one because of the new up and coming superstars. Aaron Rodgers should not be on your top five list. He should not be on your top ten list. And if he's gonna be there, he's number ten or eleven. But he is not a top ten quarterback and he proved it he was given multiple chances to win that game Brady threw three straight picks put the ball right in your hands indecisiveness and he's not clutch and we saw that on national television and I'm gonna and I'm gonna we said that's that's our next topic we said this the other week but even Drew Brees right like he he took he took a, a downfall this year too Brady goes in there and retires you and I would put Breeze ahead of Aaron Rodgers. So if you, those guys are kind of like one and two, wherever you put them next to each other, Breeze is ahead of Rodgers. But if Rodgers has no more shots at a Super Bowl, he, he's not going to be top 10 of all time. You guys, you got guys like Patrick Mahomes was going to a second straight Super Bowl. <clears throat> and it's not about if, it's about when Patrick Mahomes, when Patrick Mahomes wins a second Super Bowl, whether it's this year or another year, he surpasses a lot of these guys and puts his name in the top five all time. Let's also remember that some of you, you spoke about Aaron Rodgers not being clutch. Some of his quote unquote, most clutch plays were just huck them, chuck Hail, Hail Marys to the end zones that just, he lucked out and a dude just happened to catch it. I mean, that, 
Yeah. That's not like, oh, good on you as a quarterback. I mean, we saw with Jameis coming in to chuck it up. Like sometimes, I mean, that's not a that's not a good throw. That's just you chuck it up and hope for the best. And then he also gave up a huge lead against the Seahawks, you know, and and sent the Seahawks to the Super Bowl because he wasn't able to finish that game either. So I, I agree. Uh, I I think Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback, but the the I don't think again. Like he's a top 10 quarterback and the goat conversation that always gets brought up with, you know, ever since Manning retired, that was like, Oh, if Rogers, even Brady said, if Rogers played in, in new England, that he would throw 7,000 yards. I mean, that's fine. He's not going to win anything. He's just not a good quarterback come playoffs. And the people that want to suck Aaron Rodgers, Dick, listen, he's in one of the best divisions to always win the division. He's got no competition in that division year in and year out. He really doesn't. He, he Hot take from a Patriots fan. <laughs> okay. He doesn't have any competition and he's at least had receivers on his team. He's had playmakers on his team. It's not like he was doing it with nobody. He was given an opportunity. Here you go, go win the game. And you, and you, you choked. He completely choked. I would even say that Ben Roethlisberger, when it's all said and done, Ben Roethlisberger is ahead of Aaron Rodgers. If you want to do any sort of quarterback list. My opening thoughts, um, if you guys were wondering before we jump right back into that topic, was shout out to Max Kellerman, who has finally declared that his cliff statement about Tom Brady was wrong prior to, uh, I think it was Super Bowl 49. I want to say it was that long ago, but uh, Max Kellerman since came out with a tweet that said Tom Brady's had a Hall of Fame career since he said that. So mad ups to him. He's finally recognizing, even though it's literally the most obvious thing in the world at this point, if someone argues that Tom Brady's not the goat at this point, they're delusional. They're, they're not a fan. Something is wrong in their head. I'm thinking of the, like the, the Stephen A. Smith LeVar ball interview, like something's wrong with that person. Like Tom Brady hurt them in such a way, hurt their fan base in such a way uh, that's irreparable. So Sorry, I guess, but um, jumping back in right into these, these topics, we're going to talk about championship weekend. I know we've already touched on it a little bit uh, between Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady in the matchup. I think everyone was was excited to watch for the first time in, a, in quite a long time. The first time they've ever met up in the postseason, Tom Brady's first trip to the playoffs with an NFC team, and he steamrolled. Thoughts? I wouldn't say steamroll. I, I, I mean, he's I in mean... the Super Bowl. He, uh, yeah, but when you look at steamroll, you know who steamroll the Kansas City Chiefs steamroll. Like that's a steamroll. All right. When you look at the Tampa Bay Bucks, Brady's got all the weapons around him to do it. And a lot of mistakes yesterday. Now, if Mike Evans could catch the ball on, on, on one of those drives, twice it happened right through his hands, and which ended up causing an interception. You you just know, and, and I've said this. This this Bucks team, I said this last week, this Bucks team is gonna go to the Super Bowl next year. The, all the guys are coming back. They have pretty much the whole team coming back. And for the fact is, and I'll, and I'll give it to Brady. But you you said first. they would go one of these two years with Brady. One of these two years, they'll get it. But when you look at it, they're here now. They're not going to yeah. They're not gonna not make it next year. When Breeze is gone, Rodgers is a question mark. There's really no competition. The Russell Wilson and that Seahawks team is on their way down. Goff is not good. There's no competition in the NFC for this team that they have, this core, to not make it to the Super Bowl next year. And I give him props, but the Bucks were beatable three straight weeks. They, they had Washington held around against them. The Saints made mistakes. The Packers made mistakes. And it's just the classic. And it happens in New England. It's, it's not it's whether it's out coach, but it's the other team outplaying themselves. Just play football. You're going to make mistakes, but just don't make as many mistakes as the other team. And every team they go against, they keep making more and more mistakes. Felger Mass had something good today. And they're saying, how many, how many interceptions does Brady have in these championship games? Where they, it's the AFC championship and now the NFC championship. He throws a lot of picks. His stats <clears> actually <throat> aren't that good, and I don't have them on me. But he just keeps winning. He just keeps <laughs> winning. That's what it is. And it's, just, it's crazy. It's crazy to see that. So, again, I, I am not a Tom Brady hater. And I'll get into it a little bit. But I'm not a, Brady, uh, a hater to Brady. Congratulations. You're in the Super Bowl. You deserve it. You're proving everybody wrong. And what I like is now the pressure's on Bill Belichick. You're putting pressure now back on New England saying, you better make something happen. Did you hear what Tony Romo said after the AFC championship game? What do, I you, did. What, what do you think of that, Jay? 
I think he's absolutely fucking right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do, I do mean, you think, do you think Bill's going to make the right kind of moves to get the Pats back into contention with in, in a one year turnaround after missing the playoffs? Because they have a lot of salary cap. I don't have the exact number, but it's the most they've, they've had. 60, in the it's 60 era. something million. I think we're yeah. fifth in the league next year. Uh, draft wise, no, I don't think we're going to draft anybody. I don't care if we have the 15th pick, the first pick. I just, I don't trust uh, Bill with the draft. There's, yeah. They always say I like you agree. don't want to. They you don't want to be the GM and the coach. It's just it's too much. Other people who have done that in the past have come out and admitted it. it's too much to put on your plate. Even for Bill Belichick, I think it's just too much. Uh, but something is going to happen in free agency, and we'll, we'll talk about this in more uh, later on in the podcast. But it's just look, this team was trash. We had eight people opting out. We had COVID. We didn't have OTAs. We had a quarterback coming in with a new system. He got COVID. He's coming off an injury. No training camp, no preseason. Tom Brady's leaving. Edelman's hurt. All these things happen. And yeah, we went seven and nine, didn't make the playoffs, but we almost beat the Bills. You know, we're one fumble away from beating the Bills. You know, they're the AFC championship game. We beat the Ravens. You know, they're almost, you know, they're divisional. They're playoff round. team, you know, yeah. Playoff, playoff team. Yeah. Uh, we almost, we won play again from beating the Seahawks. So, you know, so you know, I don't look at the seven and nine record. I look at when Bill had all his pieces in place for whatever he had this year, we put a good product on the field, but you know, when Jacoby Myers is your wide receiver one and your quarterback can't throw the ball, like you're going to run into some problems eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, with, with Harris showing up and, and that little fire and Sony's ass. And so, you know, with the thunder and lightning coming back next year, you know, God knows who we're going to have a quarterback next year. You know, fucking uh, what's his fuck coming back on, on helping out with the defense. Matt Patricia coming back up on the defense. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see us going back to back without making the playoffs. Whether or not we're a Super Bowl contender next year, I don't know. Bills are still going to be good. You know, obviously the Ravens AFC, are still going to be good. AFC yeah, became AFC, surprisingly AFC, tough overnight. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The AFC, is, it's going to be rough. But, you know, I see us as being uh, definitely uh, a divisional round type, type right. season next year. Babs? There's nothing wrong with that. I, I the, the one thing that truly bothers me, Jay and Brendan, about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, and especially yesterday, what bothers me, is that Patriots fans are celebrating this like the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl in two weeks. And it I feels that way. This. It almost felt that way. It feels that way. And I in 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 we've been saying it like I get that you want to individually root for this guy right here, Tom Brady. And that's fine. But he doesn't play for the Patriots anymore. And he won. I was like, oh, that's cool. But someone said this to me in a DM and said, you're like the only Pats fan page that isn't sucking all the Bucks dicks and saying, oh, congratulations, this and that. Like, you're at least trying to talk about what the hell is going on next year. You're at least talking about what's going on with Bill Belichick or you talk about Patricia. You look at the free agents and this and that. And, and like I said, it was a complete cop-out. It's a complete cop-out for Patriots fans. And, like, what are you going to do going forward? Because this guy's going to go back there next year. Then what's going to happen in two years when his contract's done? He's probably going to go to San Francisco. You're going to become a 49ers fan because he wants to go play for his hometown. Like while the Patriots are actually doing something, I just feel like you're starting to separate a little bit in the fan base of who's sticking around and this and that. And, and I get it. You want to show support, but imagine just spending your money on Bucks merchandise. Like you're, you're, you're going down. There's people that I know that are going down to Tampa for the Super Bowl that are going to spend the thousands of dollars to try to get in there and go to Bucks watch parties. They're going to be wearing Bucks hats. They're going to be wearing Bucks jerseys, this and that. And, and again, I, I've said this, that if you, live in, if you live outside of New England and you became a Pats fan within the last 20 years, I'll, I'll cut you a break. But if you live in New England and you're doing this, it's, it's fucking pitiful. I just feel like we said this in, oh, many episodes ago about how the NBA, it's losing in sports is losing rivals. Like, cause everyone just loves players from different areas and you fall in love and there's no pure rival anymore. No one sticks. There's no loyalty in sports anymore when it comes to fandom. And it's a generational thing. It's these young kids that come up and they see that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. It's just, it bothers me that it just felt like <clears throat> on my timeline yesterday, everyone's congratulating the Tampa Bay Bucks. Like they're acting and they're celebrating and they're drinking 
Well, it, it was it was a little like, different this year in the sense that you see people like you're talking about seeing people on Instagram like congratulating the Bucks. I definitely like if you just look at Tom Brady's story right now. There's so many like little stories from from people mentioning him. Like it's it's like the thing. It's like a bunch of little periods up there. It's not. It's like when your story is wicked long when you post DMs. Um, but you're seeing all these congratulatory messages to Tom Brady. Like there's a, I say there's still a very finite amount of people that are actually just pure Buccaneers fans versus people that are they just want to see greatness in what Tom Brady is still doing at this age. Can I speak to this as a Tampa resident? The Patriots fans that are down here are Bucks fans. There's very few of us. I, I want to give a shout out to my girl Dion Bent, uh, Dion. 91 on Instagram, give her a follow. Her and I are maybe the only two true alpha Patriots fans in this fucking city because every single other fucking Patriots fan in the city of Tampa is, oh my God, Tom Brady. Oh my God, he's going to some gold crock. Look at him go. And I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I, I listened to uh, episode 89 and, and, and I, I agreed with what you said. You know, I'm, I'm happy for Tom. Good for you. I mean, that man gave me 20 years of just pure joy. Um, Dominance. Right. But front of the jersey is more important to me than back of the jersey. And, I, and I'll always say that. I will ride and die with my pats. And, you know, if, if to me, if there was a way for Tom to get a seventh ring and for Gronk to get a seventh ring and 51 other Buccaneers still lose. That's the, that's that the dream. Be that's the best case scenario. scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Best case scenario. <laughs> Uh, obviously that's that's not a thing but it's this whole thing where you know I don't blame the kids you know like you said Babs like if you're you know under 25 or whatever is Tom Brady's all they know you know I I grew up I'm a little older I I grew up with Steve Grogan Tony Eason like I remember we got bled so I was like oh damn a good quarterback what is this I didn't know what to do with that um so I, you know, I kind of paid my dues and and you know sat through one in fifteen seasons and getting number one draft picks and and, and that's and, and and stop. That's what bothers me because <laughs> you paid your dues and even and this is my first real losing season seven and nine, which is not really a losing season, right? I've and never I, seen it. This is my first time ever about. losing a season. It's a, a throwaway season. season. I don't even care about this season. This season it, doesn't matter. This season has the hugest asterisk of any season ever. But as a Patriots unless Tom Brady fan, wins, but as a Patriots <laughs> fan. I have accepted the seven and nine. I have accepted a bad yeah. season and I'm trying to be optimistic to look forward. Whereas most people are saying, whatever, I'm going to go root for another team and go, Oh, look at, I get to root for a team in the playoffs. Now I get to, instead of sitting there trying to be like, Hey, let's hype up the team. What do we have to do? What are we going to do this and that? No, no one gives a shit about the Patriots. So that's what I'm saying is it's, it's, it's such a dying breed of, of fandom that you have to sit through it. No, like you, you have to sit through a bad year and just, and, and that's, that's what I, that's why I didn't want Brady to win it this year. Like, I just don't want him to be there because I want the Pats fans to, to, to live through that losing season. Because you know what's going to happen is the Pages is going to be right back in it next year. And now everyone has two teams now to, to root yeah. for. It's, it's crazy. Oh, I, I, I deal with so many people down here that go, well, you know, the Pats are like my number one team, but now the Bucks are my right. NFC team. Uh, no. yeah. So what are you, what are you going to no. do next year? <laughs> no, yeah. you can't Look, do that. That's I not how it works. Look, Fan is short for fanatic, okay? And you can't, and favorite is singular. You can't have two favorite teams. You can't have it's more than one best Favorites friend. with an S at the end is an oxymoron. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. It literally doesn't itself. make sense. Yes, exactly. Thank you. So to, to any of you guys who are out there, and, I, and, and again, it's, it's, not, it's not these kids' fault. Because when, when I grew up, I had to read the Hartford Current. And that's how oh. I figured out what happened in sports was oh am i boring you with my old man talk <laughs> oh no i was just making sure the also yeah are you talking about newspapers right now what's going yeah, on yeah. no but i'm saying <laughs> so when i grew when i grew up i didn't have access to what did houston do what did chicago do what did la do i watched the end of the news the five minutes on wfsb channel three and cool. that was five minutes of what happened in sports and i only i only knew what the red sox did what the Celtics did, what the Patriots, that's all I knew. So that was where my fanhood grew. And that's why I'm so passionate about those teams. Whereas now you scroll through Instagram, you got sports center and Omar throwing everything up there and house of highlights and ball is life and all these things. 
that you can live in Newfoundland, Canada or whatever. I don't even know if that's a real place. And you can be like, oh, I'm a Luka Doncic fan or I'm a LeBron fan or I like Pat Mahomes. And you see all these guys and their highlights instantly. And I didn't have that. Like even baseball, wait, I had to wait for this week in baseball to watch baseball highlights once a week on a Saturday afternoon. And that was it. That was the only time I got to see if like somebody on the Royals did something. So I don't blame the kids for, for following players and liking stuff, but it's fucking annoying. And that's my old man get off my lawn moment. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will say this for like Brendan, right? He supports Tom Brady, but look. He's not wearing yeah, I'll, a Brady I'll, I'll, play, I'll play devil's but, advocate here. This is usually Babs' job. I'm supporting Tom Brady. I would love to see him win his seventh ring. Like when I like, I'll ask you this question. Sorry to cut you off, but you were talking about how the fact you're like, oh, cool, Tom Brady is going to the Super Bowl again. Did you have like a face, like just straight face, like you're watching a normal football game you don't care about, or you're watching a game like I? I had a big old boyish grin on my face watching that guy do it again. It's, Are you asking it's, me it's, how it's, I felt during the game? Yeah, it, it, either of you. Yeah, both of you. You got I'll let Babs go for. It. Oh no! I'll tell you what I what I I took a fucking nap. I didn't watch the game. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't I didn't I didn't watch the game at all. And, I, and I'll tell you why. I'll I'll tell you why. It's like watching a sex tape of your ex girlfriend <laughs> and her new hotter younger boyfriend. It's Oof. just I don't want to I don't want to watch that. I don't want to see somebody who. I rooted for and got gave me so much. It, the way I describe it, because people when when I was down here, like, oh, you're gonna become a Bucks fan now, and that's exactly. I was like, look, I got a 20 year relationship, and it ended. And look, I wish the best for the guy, but I I, I don't want his new boo to have any success. Fuck that guy. <laughs> like, we we already know this. He's the greatest of all time. If his career ended in New England in 2019 and that was it, he's still number one, greatest of all time. Him keep winning and winning. You don't have to shove it in my face being like, I'm telling you, he's the GOAT. Look, look, we already know that. It's like, you know it. Like, I don't care. Like, he, you know what's going to happen. He's going to go win a Super Bowl somewhere. He could win two. He could win three. I don't care. That's great for you. If anything, that's going to start devaluing what he did in New England because if he's winning everywhere else, then, like, what's he going to retire as? He's going to retire as a multiple person. All these people, I read it on Reddit, like, oh, he's going to come back to the Patriots and retire one day. He doesn't care about the Patriots anymore. He's done. He moved on. So do He we. already said we he's not coming back to New England. But if you want so. to individually root for Tom Brady, I'm saying this to you, Brendan. You're wearing a Patriots Brady jersey. You're saying, you know what? I'm supporting the individual player, but I'm still repping the team that I always root for. I, exactly. I actually don't mind that. Like, that's fine. Exactly. But there's a lot of people well, out there right. that I've seen the pictures of. Oh, their Patriots jerseys are hanging up, but they're wearing this jersey here. They're wearing a Gronkowski exactly jersey. Exactly what Jay's they, been saying. The front Rudolph of the jersey. An the front Brown of it. Puck's jersey. Like, that's, that's, what I, that's what it bothers yeah, me. Yeah, that, bo- that bothers me, too. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear my Tom Brady jerseys for the rest of my life. I feel like that both of you would, too. Like, Everybody, I don't, yeah. Like, exactly. Absolutely. It's one of those jerseys that's going to be iconic for the rest of time. I have his number tattooed on me. I don't have a choice. Exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. I, and I will say this. I've gotten this so many times in comments this past couple of days. You're not a real Pats fan if you don't root for Tom Brady. It's like I root for him, but I'm not supporting the, an or, another organization with all these other people. I don't want Bruce Arians to be a Super Bowl head coach champion. Do you think I want him to be a champion? And, I, and, 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 and this is going to be different, but I don't want Rob Gronkowski to be a champion. He fucked the Patriots at the end of his tenure. It was a bad business move between both sides. And that makes me salty to see him do his retirement, his fake retirement, to take a year off, to keep teasing and playing with the fan base, the fan base that buys his jerseys and merchandise to say, he, I'm going to come back, don't worry about it. To unretire just to go play with Brady and go win a Super Bowl, that bugs me. How can that not bug you? Like I can it, tell you I, why. I can tell you right now why it doesn't bug me. He said he loves me on his Instagram, so he's good. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I got nothing against Gronk either. He's, he's, look, man, if the man says he loves me and puts that out publicly, he's golden in my eyes. For the, like, I want, I want, I, oddly enough, I want Gronk to win more than I want Brady to win wow. just because of that. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Babs, surprisingly, you're the, you're the only one here that actually kind of looks like Gronk, and you're the one that doesn't want him to win a Super Bowl? Isn't yeah, this where your brand came from? <laughs> you know what? When you when you when you start getting on in the inside, you know when you start getting into the higher up area, you start realizing there's a lot of a lot of trash going on, man. 
you know, and we got the, yeah, they found my brand on the young Gronk stuff, <laughs> but the young Gronk stuff, I changed it before anything truly even popped off. And a name, the Spike King was more of a shot at Rob Gronkowski himself. And it's cool over the time. Yeah. You get to talk to Camille and you get your Jersey signed by him and this and that, but then things can change. People change. We, we do. And I just feel that what he did to the organization last year was just not right. It wasn't being a professional athlete. And, and people can say, well, he was going to get traded to Detroit. That's business. They've won Super Bowl 51 without him. They were trying to get him for the max value because Belichick is trying to think ahead. And, and, and when now I'm starting to look back on it, when Belichick said earlier this season, we sold out. We sold out for four trips and three rings. It's true. That's why they were put in this seven and nine spot. And then it, that's why I'm giving Belichick at least the benefit of the doubt that he can turn it around next year. They can't get any worse than what they are. What? And, it, and it, I'm sorry, but the, the last thing I want to say is, is that I said this on my post today and Bill, we trust. And I wrote this thing out. It's one of these things that I just want to have the narrative where, you know, everyone's saying Brady won, Bill, nothing, Brady won. It's all in your face. Now it's all you're going to see when five years goes down the line and Brady probably wins two Super Bowls. Belichick's probably going to get back to a Super Bowl and win one. I will give Belichick five years to do that. Right. So, and so, so what changes about the narrative then if the Patriots and, or if Bill, Bill Belichick and insert quarterback name here make a deep playoff run next year, what changes about this narrative of Tom that versus they're Bill? Even. It's just an even thing. Okay. They're both good. They're both, they, they, they're, Brady just proved this year he doesn't need Belichick. He, he proved that. Right. But he also needs a good team well, around. Well, Brady didn't too. prove that he doesn't need Belichick. Brady proved that if you give him a roster that is so stacked that Antonio freaking Brown is your fourth option, that maybe you'll go to the Super Bowl if you're the best quarterback of all time. Fair. <laughs> but it's not like the Patriots were not trying to give him rosters. Some years I can agree with. But some years you're tied up in certain areas with the salary cap. I'm, I'm just saying I could be Bruce Arians I, and the Bucks would be no different right now. Absolutely. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, so moving on from, from, from Tom Brady, or not necessarily moving on, we all concocted sort of our feelings for Tom Brady, similar to what Jay's been talking about. When you break up, you break up, you listen to some, some songs, you got a breakup playlist. So we're gonna we're gonna go around the horn here and uh, share exactly some 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 of those songs that that make us think of Tom Brady at, at this current moment in time. Uh, Babs, let's start with you. Oh, you said first of all, if us, any of you guys pick my song and went before me, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> you said to pick three songs that describe how how I feel about Tom Brady, right? So what I was doing was the three stages of mourning, like just because of. It, it's it's the first song I have is sad from XXX to Tayshaun because I feel sad. I feel sad that Tom Brady's going to a Super Bowl in a different jersey. That's how sad I, see, I feel terrible about it because I know that when he wins in two weeks, I'm not celebrating it like the Patriots won a Super Bowl. I'm not going to go out and buy the merchandise. I'm not buying that new hat, that new fancy hat you rep all year. I'm not buying that jersey with the patch on. I'm not doing that. I'm not repping that. And that's what makes me sad because I know it's going to happen. And whether it's this year or next year, it's going to happen. And it's sad because I'm not going to celebrate it. And, he, and he's the one who's been, who gave you six of them. Number two, I Will Survive by <laughs> Gloria <laughs> Daniel. Because, listen, I feel sad, but you know what? At first I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> but I will survive. I will survive. You know what? Because... Over time, like I just said, it's gonna take a it's gonna take a little bit, but the Patriots will be back into the Super Bowl eventually, and it's gonna feel very sweet when they win a Super Bowl and Brady wasn't there. And in 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 these years right now that I'm spending, and I and I picked my side, it's gonna feel awesome when they win. I just Last love the fact week, that like I know that like at least 20 minutes ago you were listening to some Gloria Gaynor. I, was, I will survive. I was, I was myself up. <laughs> Singing out and in the lastly, car. The last song. I have picked is how's it going to be by third eye blind because Patriots fans, Tom Great Brady, song, fans, by the way. how's it going to be when Tom Brady leaves Tampa and goes to San Fran, but guys, how's it going to be when Brady retires from the NFL? What are you going to latch on to? Because if the Patriots are just a middle Alcohol. of the road team, eight and eight, eight you know, eight, 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 nine, the new, new years, how's it going to be? How's it going to be? 
what uh, what 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 when it looks di- what football looks like when Tom Brady's gone. These are that's a great that's a great little that, list. I I love your list, Babs. Bring, well done. Here to my eye. <laughs> but uh, Jay, what are you? All song? right. So uh, my first song is Green Day, "Time of Your Life." Okay. Uh, and I wrote down some of the lyrics for each of these songs to kind of explain why I chose them. So uh, there's a lyric in that song that says, so take the photographs and still frames in your mind, hang them on a shelf and good health and good time. Tattoo some memories and dead skin on trial for what it's worth. It was worth all the while. So the reason why I picked that is, look, it was the fucking time of our lives. And it's, and that song is just like, look, that was great. We're going to remember it, but it's over. It's time to move on. We're going to move on to a new quarterback. We're going to move on to a new roster that's going to turn over very, very quickly with all this cap room. And it's time to just take those Tom Brady memories, put them up here. They're done now. It's over. It was a good 20 years. It was the best 20 years ever, but it's done. Uh, it was a good time. Yeah, it was. Oh, my God. It was great. <laughs> The next song is kind of way out of left field, and it's only for one line. It's the first line in the song. It's Kelly Clarkson, Never Again. And the first line in that song is, I hope the ring you gave her turns her finger green. It's a fake ring. It's a fake ring. Because this Bucks team, if they win, it's a fake ring. It's a COVID ring. It was a ring that the city of Tampa does not deserve. Look, the Lightning, the Rays, they did it the right way. They built a franchise, they put it together, and they went at it. This team, this 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 Bucks team, this is this is like it's like it's like fucking a prostitute versus picking up a girl <laughs> at a bar. Okay, one of those you have to be smooth and suave and kind of know what you're doing and say the right things and make the right moves. The other one, you just need cash, straight cash, homie. This ring is a fake ring. It was a bought ring during a COVID year, which is an asterisk year, and it doesn't count. I don't even, even I'll, I'll come on and say it. If the Pats won this year, I'd be like, yeah, hey, we have six and a half. Cool. It's not, a, it's not a real year. I don't count it. My third song is CeeLo Green, Fuck You. Oh, no. <laughs> not Forget You? Fuck you. <laughs> okay. Look, I'm a grown ass man. The lyrics, there's lyrics in that song. It says, I guess the change in my pocket just wasn't enough. Mm. If I was richer, I'd still be, or if I was, sorry, I got to make, make sure it rhymes. If I was richer, I'd still be with you. And that just comes down to, again, money. If the Pats had the cap money to keep Brady, you know, if we didn't, like you said, shell out for, for four, four times in five years, Brady would still be a Pat, you know? If we had money to supply him with weapons and pay him as well, he'd still be a patriot. And one of the lines in that song that 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 sums it up best for me, and the, the main reason why I chose that song is, although there's pain in my chest, I still wish you the best. Mm. Fuck you. Mm. <laughs> That's this is this might be the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my song, so the, my first one is called mine are like kind of title based but i listened to some of them um so you were good to me by chelsea cutler tom was good to us that's all there is to say man was he good to us that's like a sad song so we miss him that's like a i miss you song you know what i mean but uh my second one happier by bastille lately i've been thinking i want you to be happier so I, I want Tom to be happy. I want him to go get those rings. And, and you said that with so much emotion. I felt dude, that I'm, that was I'm, true. I'm feeling, that came I'm from, feeling that emotional came from right deep. now. <laughs> I'm feeling emotional talking about all these things. and Because music does that to you. You know what I mean? Um, but my th- last song by Kid Cudi, only the pursuit of happiness. And that's what Tom left for, for, for a purpose. And he's tried to go pursue happiness in in. in becoming the greatest to, to, to ever do it and setting himself from honestly any other athlete um, in their sport respectively 
other than the the Jordans and the Serena Williams. He's setting himself so far apart at the moment. It's it's unbelievable. But uh, that is our, our our Boston's big three jukebox for for <laughs> our Tom Brady songs. If only we had the rights to any of these. Songs. I know that'd be great. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how it works with podcasts, but I we definitely can't put it on YouTube. But I think you can play like uh, like a second or two of each song. Oh, but uh, well, that's that works. It. Otherwise, <laughs> we sing, we if we sing it out, you can put the instrumentals in the background. Yeah, we'll just sing so sing along to it. Exactly. Do, uh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no one wants that. They'll, they'll cut off right here. Yeah, they'll, they'll move on to their next podcast. Hopefully, we have another one out by then. But uh, moving on to the Tom Brady talk has been fun. But uh, moving on to the Boston Celtics, Jalen Brown the other night against the Cleveland Cavaliers dropped a NBA record. First time in NBA history. This, this blew my mind. I thought I feel like this could have happened by someone like a Steph Curry or Clay Thompson type, but um, Jalen Brown in 19 minutes played in a blowout of Cleveland who, by the way, beat the nets twice in a row. I just need that to be known The the big three nets um, Jalen Brown dropped 33 points in 19 minutes played. And that's never been done in NBA history. That's the most amount of points that have ever been scored for a player who, who's only played 19 minutes. So um, Jalen Brown is was, maybe still is, on a tear with uh, Jason Tatum being out with, with COVID. But Tatum is back tonight versus Chicago. But how are you guys feeling about Jalen Brown leading the Celtics and what he's been able to do with, with, with Tatum sidelined? Let me, let me say one thing before I yeah, make my sidelines. comment about that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm a huge Jalen Brown fan since, since the draft, I was like, Oh my God, this kid has so much potential uh, on and off the court. He's just, I, he's a young man that me as an old man, I, I look up to him. He's, he's it's very rare for me to, to look at an athlete, 23, 24 years old and just go salute you. Yeah. Everything you're doing is just, it's right. Whether it's on the court, off the court, but that is one hell of a cherry picked stat uh, for, for those who don't know the, the 33 points in 19 minutes is for people who only played 19, 19 minutes, minutes or less <laughs> in that game. So most people, when they're like, wow, I've scored uh, 33 points in 20 minutes. Like yeah, Clay Thompson who scored exactly. fucking like, out. yeah, you know, but guess what? They kept playing like the rest of the game. Without um, Jalen. <laughs> yeah, it, whereas Jalen was like, well, right. I guess we're done here because we have a back-to-back and we have to get on a right. flight to Chicago the next day. Uh, Jalen would have scored 50, probably. Yeah, yeah. And then Cleveland wasn't just playing be, any defense. Yeah, yeah. and then it would have just been like, wow, a great night by Jalen probably would have been a career high for him. And right. then that's what we'd be talking about, not some incredibly cherry-picked quote-unquote NBA record. It's like one of those ESPN stats where it's like yeah. the only team to yeah. ever win by right. 43 points on a Sunday night. On a Tuesday where exactly. it's 72 degrees or exactly. in a waxing crescent. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> because most of the time, you know, when you're scoring, they don't like go, you know what you should do, dude? You should just sit on the bench because you're yeah. playing way too well. So, we'll um, but but bigger picture, bigger picture, you know, jokes aside, uh, you know, with Kemba and, and Tatum out, it was a prove-it time for Jalen. It was – you know, look, was the all-star snub last year, you know, uh, accurate? Or is he somebody that, you know, because I've always seen talk, well, you know, comparing him to like players like Donovan Mitchell and stuff like that, where what if Jalen Brown was the first option on a crappy team? You know, what if he did play for like the Kings or something like that? What could he do when he wasn't in Kemba's or Kyrie or Tatum or Gordon Hayward's shadow? Would he be able to be that 25 26 27 point score and this year with without Kemba and and without Tatum he's proven it he's proven it. he's an all-star he's keep playing like this he's 13 all NBA yeah the the guy is a legit stud and he's I don't want to jinx it but he's on that like PG th- PG 13 he's on that Kawhi Leonard he yeah. he's on that 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 route to being just an unstoppable both sides of the ball that's, offense that's what's defense. fun about the celtics right now is they have these two elite wings arguably the two most important positions that you need and they're both elite two-way players great on and they're the both under 25 end. exactly they're both great children. On the offensive end and defensive end and then you, you talked about the fact that you look up to to a guy like jalen brown he's doing so much off the court he is one of the wisest men that i think i've ever seen like actually like display their wisdom 
um, like outside of basketball, like this dude is beyond his years. Like it, it, I, it blows my mind. He's only lived on the earth for, for less than 25 years. And, and he has some of the, the wisdom that he does. It, it really is impressive. Um, Babs, how, well, how you, you hear- feeling about Jalen Brown? You can go Jay, if you have something else to say. No, I was just, just real quickly. Like when you hear stuff like pre-draft where, Right. Teams didn't want to pick him because he was too smart, too intelligent. Yeah. Like, you know, what, how was that a negative? <laughs> <laughs> like in everything you look, everything you look for in a quarterback, you don't want in like a small forward. I don't, I don't get it. Like it Crazy. doesn't, I know. Yeah. And, but go ahead, Babs. And I, yeah, I just, remember that draft specifically because I didn't know who Jalen Brown was coming out of college, but I knew who Buddy Heald was. And I really wanted Buddy Heald from like way miles ahead. I was, I was upset when the, the Celtics took Jalen Brown because it's a name that I'd never heard before. But when they passed on Buddy Heald, it's, I recognized it as that instead of seeing what we actually got. Yeah, but Buddy Heald coming out of the draft was right. already at his peak. He was right. everything he was going to be. Just a sniper, yeah. Right, but he was, you know, he was like 22, 23 coming in as a rookie, whereas you got these, you know, kids like Tatum and, and Brown coming in one, one year in college, yeah. one and done in it there's just so much room to grow. And, and thank God Danny Ainge saw that because, mm-hmm. you know, he was not projected to go three and uh, you know, there was, there's was st- talk about him going five, six or seventh in that draft. And, and my God, we just, Danny Ainge just nailed those good. drafts. <laughs> yeah. You, you guys literally went back and forth and took everything I was going to say, because I was going <laughs> to talk about the draft and I was just going to talk about Danny Ainge, how we will give him shit here and there, but man, that's Danny Ainge night where he's, having a few afterwards saying I made the right choice. I stuck with it. Even when Celtics fans booed me and said, what the hell are you doing? He stuck with it and signed him and kept him around. Uh, and then you say the same thing with Tatum, just the fact that they have these two guys locked up for the next couple of years, but it's- Wait, can we add to that real quick? We don't just have Jalen Brown signed. We have him signed without using a max. Yeah. Like yeah. His, so- his contract is the best contract in the NBA right now. Immediately. Which, which, which was going to bring me to my next point and saying what's <laughs> great about having him signed is that you can sign him when the time comes and give him a super max. You can give him that, and he's going to get it because of the way he's playing, especially the way the NBA, how money can just be handed out. He's going to get every top dollar coming to him in the future. I just really, really hope the Boston Celtics can figure it out within the short term because they, they, they need to at least get to a finals. They have to at least show Brown and Tatum, hey, this is an organization you want to play for because we're, we're going to get there. Going to Eastern Conference finals every single year is just not going to cut it. They, they're going to need the taste to say, this is why I'm going to stay committed to this organization. Even if they make a finals and lose it, but you know that there's something they're building would make them want to stay long term. I just don't want to see these two guys gone I, and I just because I'm always getting worried about contracts and how it will end up working out I just hope that these two be, are Boston Celtics for the next 10 to 12 to 14 years whatever it is for their career I hope they stay in Boston but I but that's where Ains needs to make that one extra move that one extra something I feel like they've been trying to figure it out I'm playing it around with the last couple of years and just hasn't worked out yet but if this team again like I said to Watabia in the last episode we never seen a team in the Boston Celtics like, like, like Jay. How many times has the Boston Celtics in the last five years been fully healthy, hundred percent, the whole teams together? It's been like it's been, like ten percent of the time. Thank you. Yeah, they're, so that, they're that, literally that, the hospital Celtics half e- the time. E- even tonight, Tatum's back. Kemba's resting for his knee. Like it's right. just yeah. <laughs> it's never full I, strength. <laughs> and I and I said for this season, at least this season, if you can get twenty five straight games at some point where the entire team is together everyone's a hundred percent. That's what this team really needs. I think to get them over the hump when they end up heading into the playoffs. That's what, that's what I want to see from the Boston Celtics this year. I want to see somebody who can guard Embiid. I also want to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers, by the way, Brendan, because they beat them back to back nights, a little quick sweep right there. Doc Rivers just loves the Eastern conference. He comes right back in here and he's the, and now the Sixers are the number one seed. And I think that, with players like Embiid and Simmons on that, on that, that Sixers team needs a coach like Doc Rivers and right. Doc Rivers is able to bring up players and, and, and get the best out of them. Does that mean that they're going to go to the championship? No, I, like Doc, Doc has at least had a Clippers team that would always be fighting that would get into the playoffs, but they'd only go so far. All right. They were, they, were, they barely made it out of the first round ever. Yeah. But you're also going to look at the, I was also going to say, when you look at the Western conference, 
Right. There was so much competition over there too. It, it's 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 hard to even go anywhere in the Western Conference. I mean, although the East has been stacked up a little bit now of recent, where everyone's coming over here now. But uh, the Philadelphia 76ers is a team that you lose those two games now. It's the important. Celtics get their shit together. You, you'll you'll get those wins back later in the season. And I and I really do hope I see those two teams clash in the playoffs. That'll, that'll be a good series again, especially since last time we played, it was, it was a sweep, but Ben Simmons wasn't playing. The Sixers weren't at their full strength. Um, so it will be quite interesting. I think it's going to be a ton of fun seeing, seeing the Sixers again in the playoffs. Cause those, those series have had some heat. They've been some, uh, some tension brewing between those two teams. And what's great is that I put this picture up here. I was looking to find it in the, and for those that are listening, it's a picture of myself and GRD at the last Celtics home game right before the pandemic truly started and got in there. And it's actually crazy. We we're just talking about the other day saying that we were wearing these masks that I got at Lowe's. When you go to Lowe's, there was no mask available. Right. And it was crazy that they're sanitizing the railings, this, and that no one wore a mask inside that stadium, but I'm hoping that by June, when the playoffs are here, May, so May, June, July, like just whatever it ends up being. Cause maybe the NBA has to push things back. I hope yeah, there's they, fans. They, they will be pushing fans, it back a little bit. I hope there's fans, at least for the playoffs, whether that's 6,000 people, that's fine. Like, I just want to be inside that, that garden for the playoff time because the Celtics, I think, need that as well, too. Oh, hey, yeah. If we get, uh, if we get Celtics in. Raptors playoff, everybody's invited. We're going to Tampa again. <laughs> that would be, be that would be quite the trip. It's going to be hot as hell. Speaking of our trip to Tampa and, and uh, Payne Pritchard had his career night down there, but – Unfortunately, he did receive a, a minor MCL sprain. It looked a lot worse than it could have been because it didn't look like he could put any weight on it when it indeed happened. So um, in the game against Philadelphia, I think the second second of the back-to-back or the first against them or the one-and-one. One. It was one of the games against Philly. Um, Dwight Howard pushed Jalen Brown and basically just kind of manhandled him, and Jalen Brown lost his balance and, and fell on to, to Peyton Pritchard's knee um it really really awkwardy like right side angle is it was as bad as it, it, it could have gone it looked like um Pritchard went down immediately Brown hopped right up and they were trying to help him up but uh play was already started or something they couldn't get a timeout whatever it was but Pritchard couldn't put any weight on his knee and it looked really bad the Celtics Twitter is all speculating that towards ACL and the, the all doctors campaign was all over. doctors on Twitter. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah all I'm, the, not, all I'm the, not gonna lie all the health experts <laughs> I doctor, turned to my girlfriend immediately I was like that's an ACL exactly yeah. like, we <laughs> all we all looked at it and the, the way he, just the way he uh like held himself after he couldn't put weight on it is like sheesh this is bad but you know who he looked like he looked like peter griffin in that where episode where he's like just like, like ah, yeah ah. <laughs> you know but then he went back during halftime put the street clothes on came back out on the bench to support support the crew uh, that was a great thing to see it definitely shows the the camaraderie there because i feel like a lot of guys if they get injured they're not going to come back out onto the floor like they might get changed and whatever get ready for for the ride home or back to the team hotel whatever but Pritchard was out there Pritchard was out with his guys because the Celtics were fighting in a, a really close game against the Sixers down the stretch but ended up uh falling to the to Philly Sixers twice that, but, like you said that's that's so true it's very telling with the chemistry yeah. on that team that the fact is like you know, even if he's really, really hurt, and nah, I want to be out there with my guys. Like, I want to watch the game with them. I want to be there to support. I'm not just going to hide out in the locker room for the remainder of the game, like, just right. icing it up. Like, I'll take that's, care of it afterwards. That's what's great about this Celtics team is, like, you can easily look at teams in the past and look at different guys and see, like, where the chemistry issues might start. Like, look at, like, an individual player and say, oh, that guy doesn't really necessarily look like a great fit with the Celtics. Looks like he wants to play somewhere else. So you look back at, like, a Vincent Poirier last year or a Kyrie Irving the year before before um you don't see that on this team you don't see guys that want to get out you don't see guys that want to go play for another team secure their bags everyone's either either locked up or playing for their role on the celtics nonetheless um so it is a ton of fun to watch these guys definitely mesh with each other and see um what they can actually build together as as opposed to look looking outwards and seeing what they can find somewhere else they're looking all inwards and seeing what this celtics team can do so if seeing if they can do something special together this year if there's going to be one guy that ends up doing that's going to end up being Marcus Smart. You think? Be, I, I if, think he's he's one of the spark plug uh, glue guys on this team. But I feel like it's going to almost be telling at some point where it's like he's not going to be – his services will no longer be needed in Boston. And I feel like yeah. at some point, I, at some point, 
you're going to have to get a, you have to trade him at some point. I know what you mean. Like some value out of it. You don't want to just let him walk. Yeah. I would use the word more kind of like expendable at that point. Like Marcus Smart wants to be in Boston. That's why he resigned here. Um, But I think what you mean is, 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 I don't want to put the words in your mouth, but what I could kind of see in the future is Marcus becoming expendable, seeing if you can trade him for um, some younger talent or a guy that will put you over the top. He's not going to get the the defensive minutes like, like Smart does right now. But um, if you can get a guy that puts you over the edge, if you can get a, a, a top 20 player in the league for Marcus Smart, I'd say you pull the trigger on it. In this house, we do not slander Marcus we, Smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, <laughs> that's, that's not me hating Marcus Smart. We love, Look, we love no, Marcus Smart slander. here. I have never in my life had an athlete that I watched who I went from, what the fuck are you doing, you idiot to oh my god i love you and everything you stand for more than marcus smart he became a sharp shooter last year out of nowhere marcus smart is the dumbest smart player (laughs) in the history of basketball he he just like his he he makes one three he's chucking it the rest of the game granted he's gotten better at threes but hey, he, he had a he, game where he hit nine threes in a game. Well, oh, I get that it. Happens. But he's, he's also the guy who will be like, all right, who we got on the court right now? All right, we got me, Daniel Tice. Okay, so screw him. I'm not going to give him the ball. We got uh, Jason Tatum. Okay, he's all NBA. We got Kemba Walker. Okay, future Hall of Famer. Uh, we got Jalen Brown, future all-star. We got me, defensive specialist. We got seven seconds left. All right, I'm shooting. Like I don't understand. I don't understand his mindset. I don't. I don't know if he actually thinks during the games. He just. He just. He's dots. just out there he, running. Yeah. He's a bulldog. He's he's, he's a bulldog, but he's a puppy. He's just. He has all the tenacity and and fight and grit, but he's just like he's not. I feel like he's just not always thinking. He's and and it's weird because I don't see him as a selfish player. I don't think he's right. like a chucker. Yeah. So it's just he's just an odd odd player. But I swear to God, if Marcus Smart would told me to run through a wall, I'm I'm, I'm taking the helmet off. <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking the helmet off and going face first because I I would I would go to war with that kid. One hundred percent, absolutely go to the war with that kid. And you talked about you want Jalen and 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 Jason to to be Celtics for life. I want Marcus Smart to be a Celtic for life because, and 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 I and I'm not sure if Danny Ainge really wants to get rid of him because I think Danny sees a lot of himself in Marcus. Is like oh, t- they like, play similar games. You're like I'm not the most talented person on this team, but I'm gonna piss the other team off, and no one's gonna do a better job of getting in the other team's head. We all remember what he did to Harden uh, a couple of years ago with those two, uh, you know, offensive fouls on James in the last couple of seconds in that one game. Just plays like that and th- his taking charges and and just his tenacity and diving for balls like that's some like Havlicek shit. Like that's just I love it. I love seeing it. it's it's old school gritty Celtics basketball. Like Marcus Smart should have been playing in the old Garden. Like he doesn't belong in like the TD bullshit that is up there now. He he belongs playing on the the old old Boston Garden because that's just the type of player. If Marcus Smart played in the eighties, oh my god, like the Pistons would be scared of him. Like he's a he's he's a fun. This, like I I need to make sure that that was not Marcus Smart slander. I'm just saying like if the Celtics were gonna make a move. Please don't, That's, Celtics. Not, Danny, not, if you're but, listening, please don't get rid of Marcus. I'm Smart. sorry. I'm sorry for what I've I've said on the show today. <laughs> but he's got he's got the value that it could be that piece that actually gets them over the top that gets them to the finals because Marcus Smart is not getting them to the finals at this point right now. Right. Well, right now because he's starting. But once hospital Celtics become healthy Celtics, I mean, he if he was a six man continuously, I mean, he's six man uh, player of the year candidate every year. But he's not playing his role right now right. because of all the injuries. Because he has to start yeah. every every right. game. You don't want Marcus Smart starting, but coming off the bench, oh my, shutting down your your team's best wing, sign me up ten out of ten times. Yeah, moving on to a more somber note, but also staying in the basketball category. Um, tomorrow marks January twenty sixth. Um, last year, January sixth or twenty sixth, twenty twenty. The NBA community lost a beloved member, a rival, a, a hero to, to a lot. Uh, Kobe Bryant passed away um, and tragically 
tragic accident a year, almost a year ago today, but probably a year ago, if, if you're listening to on, on Tuesday or Wednesday, or whenever you're listening to the show, um, it's just tough to think about like how, how soon or like how recent that feels like, because I remember that was, that was a very long day when that happened because all the news was coming out very slowly. Um, like the, I remember when the news first broke, it's, it's like, is this real? If, have they said this before? Cause they, I know like TMZ's faked other people's deaths before or, or announced other people's deaths when they were indeed still alive. So it's one of those things like, what the heck is going on? Like, is this real? Like what, where, where am I? What's going on? That type of thing. It, it is one of those moments where you definitely take time to reflect because Kobe's one of those untouchable guys. Like he's one of those guys who, who's up on a pedestal uh, that's hard to reach. It's one of those guys who, who no matter what you do, you're going to be looking up to him in, in the basketball category or out off the court, anything similar to that. You're going to be looking up to, to Kobe um, to try to try to get exactly where he's at. You want to be like him. Like I remember like um, my parents would always talk about, they want to be like Mike. But I think the kids that grew up in the two thousands and um, even late nineties, they wanted to be like Kobe. They wanted to be, they wanted to match his game, but um, it is a somber note remembering how, how crazy this all was because this that was really the start to what made 2020 fall apart and to be one of those years that we'll, we'll all never forget for whatever reason but um what are your guys' thoughts on, on on losing the black mamba a year ago today so here's 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 my thing with kobe he made watching basketball and hating somebody fun. Right. And, and, and Babs touched on it earlier. And that's what sports is. Sports is 50% ride or die for your team. And 50% I hate your team. And Kobe was so fun to hate. Because he was so good. And that was the only reason why you right. hated him. You didn't hate him for anything he did off the field. You didn't hate him as a human being. You didn't hate him as a person. You didn't hate him as a father. You hated him because he beat you. And he beat you so, so of sheer arrogantly. Will, it felt like. Yes. So arrogantly and so mercilessly, mercilessly, whatever. Merciless. And, and yeah. And and so Jordan like. He's like, I know people say LeBron, Jordan, whatever. Kobe, and and I'm old enough again. I, I saw Jordan's whole career and I saw Kobe's whole career. Kobe's the closest thing. Kobe was a clone of Jordan. He had the same drive, the same will, the same heart, the same desire, I, the same body. Like they were, they were the same people. And, and I just have so much respect for that man um, for, for what he did on the court and for what he did in a short time, in his post playing career, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those moments in life where you'll never forget where you were when you heard the news, you know, it's just, I'll never, I'll never forget. I was, I was right. practicing softball and we all like went back to our phones and my buddy was like, yo, Kobe died. Just, no, like, you know, you're just like, that's not a thing. That's not that, real. Yeah. Yeah. Can't he's be. immortal. Like people like Kobe Bryant don't just, die like you know right. you don't you know I, he's my age like you know yeah and uh it just like you know i when i first heard it like nothing registered like i didn't believe him like you said like you know do i trust tmz and then you know i went on like twitter and read it and it's just all you're seeing and then i remember i just like sat down on in, like the dugout and i was just like Ugh. like yeah. speechless and and it was a weird, weird feeling because, and, and to bring it back to like, you know, Boston's big three and everything. It's like, I'm a Celtics fan. Right. It's like, why, why am I sad right now? Like, yeah. Yeah. My I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I, I hate this guy, but he, but I'm also a human being and I'm also right. a fan of basketball and, and sports in general. And the man did nothing wrong and he passed away due to no fault of his own. And it was it's just such a huge loss to the community uh, not just because of the stuff that he did. We didn't lose an NBA great. 
we lost somebody who was doing things off the court that were going to have more of an impact than anything he ever did on the court. And you even, know, even he, his impact on, I'll just touch on what he did off the court, but the attention he brought to, to women's basketball on the college thank you. scale. That was my next point. The, the WNBA, like Kobe was going to be a mentor for a lot of these young girls growing up, like, especially like his daughter. You look at um, college greats like Sabrina Ionescu, who's, who's dominating and who was dominating in the WNBA prior to, to an injury. But the, the, the effect that he had on young athletes growing up, male, female, um, it's going to be missed. And I think that, I know we talked about this a year ago on the show. Like that's the, that's the lasting impact. I think he would have wanted to have, like, you want to be someone who inspires. You want to be someone who you, your words have a lasting impact. And he had that, and he was going to continue developing that within his own, his own daughters and, and Gigi, who we lost, who was going to be one of the next WNBA greats, college greats at, at me and Jay's university of Connecticut. It was, <laughs> it was bound to happen. Just the, the drive that it transferred from, from, from Kobe to his, one of his daughters, or I don't, I can't speak for them all, but um, seeing that that drive was, was shared with, with both of them. Um, the inspiration that he had or inspiration that he was to, to so many and, and still is to this day, um, it'll never be forgotten. People are going to try to emulate that for, for the rest of time. And cause that's really where the, the legit Mamba mentality rose from. And, and to add to that, Brennan, as, as somebody who grew up uh, down the street from the university of Connecticut and is a proud women's basketball fan and someone who sticks up for women's basketball an awful lot. Th- the WNBA and women's basketball as a whole, let's be honest, gets a lot of shit from the common everyday Joe basketball fan. Right. And I honestly think if Gigi was still with us and Gigi went to UConn, that that narrative would start to change because you're right. Kobe was a diehard supporter. Kobe was coming to UConn games, UConn women's basketball games, and supporting them when Gigi was like nine, 10 years old, yeah. you know, she was like, Kobe was hanging out with Nafisa Collier and Brianna Stewart right. and all them. And he was such uh, an ambassador of the, of the women's game that, you know, I, I could see him, you know, and there's, there's, there's things now going on. I believe LeBron is talking about putting together a team with the dream and stuff like that, you know, stuff like that, it would change the perception that is women's basketball and would get to the thing where, you know, WNBA players no longer have to go to Russia or Europe to make money in the off season. You know, the WNBA, I, I honestly feel would have grown as a brand because of Gigi and because of Kobe's support, because how can you, as Joe Smo from Oklahoma say the WNBA sucks when one of the greatest basketball players of all time is like, no, it's a dope product. And my daughter plays. Like you just have to automatically it it's it's instant respect to the game and um, I know it's kind of uh, sidetracked off of of Kobe Bryant's uh, legacy but I I just think as as a women's basketball fan that that's something that that it's not, I'm, you're I'm not desperately gonna, gonna the, miss yeah. because we're yeah. not gonna get that exactly like, it's one of those what could have been things I know exactly what you mean Kobe Kobe Bryant um, love him or hate him transcended the NBA into a new era. So when you, when you look back as a whole in the NBA, right, you go from like Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, you go, you go uh, Kareem, you got Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, who brought the NBA into that complete new golden era. Then who's the next big major name and superstar was Kobe Bryant. It was Kobe Bryant. And then eventually handed off to LeBron James, who carries the torch still today, right? In terms of markability for the league. And when you talk about his off the court stuff, he had even a situation years ago with the this, this, this sex, sexual rape allegation, whatever it was. And he dealt with that. And some people would fall to the wayside and crumble, but he faced it. He came back changed it it's kind of his image and who he is and still dominated on the court 
to eventually that if you hated him for that, you could at least somewhat forgive him. That the forgiveness can be there, whether if you think he's a piece of scum off the court for that. Because as his life goes forward, as you guys were just both going back and forth with, once he left on the court and that's it, he starts focusing on his new life. It's like his third life. He was given another chance to have a second life. And now he's his third life, which is his family. And touching on that WNBA in women's basketball, it's, it's what needs that spark is these top generational talents like, like Kobe Bryant to start being there at the games because that Joe Schmo out there from Kentucky or Wisconsin that wants to shit on it is going to watch those games because Kobe's there and Kobe's giving his blessing for that. And that's what hurts, you know, right now is that the WNBA or women's basketball could have had that. And it's great that at least LeBron and I hope other players are going to, in their post careers, will use whatever revenue they've made to kind of pump into that and be part of that and want to help that. Cause guess what? Kobe Bryant, if the WNBA succeeds, it's going to put money in his pocket as well, too. Not only is his daughter and, and, and he is going to get the attention and everything like that. And he's going to live through another life and wants to root for that and coach her and this and that it would have made a lot of money. He, you know, when money's there to be made, it's there to be made sports are sports and people are going to watch sports if they're entertaining and, and, and this, and it's good. Right. So like you, Jay hit it perfectly. It's yet you, you, you hate Kobe. You just, you just, you root for the Celtics, but you hate Kobe. You know, when he comes to the garden, it's going to be a bloodbath. The fact that when you won a championship over him in 2008, it felt great. You beat Kobe Bryant out of all people to win a championship. And then just a couple of years later, he comes in and beats you for a championship. And that's, um, that's the thing. It's like, you win a championship against Kobe, like that championship has more weight to it. It does. You know, it's more, it was more fun to be. And then when you lose to him, you're like, ah, I mean, it was Kobe. Kobe like, what, I, were you going to beat him twice? Kobe like, <laughs> yeah. I, I would say a player that kind of holds the same way as Derek Jeter, like in baseball, where you just like, you, you hate Derek Jeter because it's Derek Jeter. It's the Yankees, right? The Lakers, the Lakers are the Yankees basketball. Like he's just, and Derek Jeter is like the Kobe Bryant, but Kobe Bryant is just an assassin on the court, killer, Mamba mentality. And it's just one of those rare players in the history of, of the NBA and going forward, you're never going to see someone like that ever again. And it's just sad because we sit here of once they retire, it's over. You can't root against Kobe and hate. He's retired. He's out of the game. What's it matter? But it's just sad because the what ifs of, what was his next move going to be going forward? Um, especially when you look at a guy like, let's say, Peyton Manning right now. Like, he's about to hit the Hall of Fame. But Kobe Bryant didn't even get to go to the Hall of Fame. He didn't even get to do his Hall of Fame speech. He didn't get to have a celebration with everybody, which you earned for the, for the 20 seasons, the 20 years you put in to the NBA. You, he didn't even get that. Whereas, like, say, the equivalent of like say Peyton Manning this year, he just 13 seconds. He's in the hall of fame. He gets to celebrate that. He, maybe he does CBS, maybe he does Fox, ESPN, whatever that you get to see his life after football and you're going to continue following. We don't get to see that with Kobe Bryant, unfortunately. And it, and it hurts. Um, and what I want to do at ride the wave, if, whenever you're listening to this, we picked a day of the day of a one year anniversary. I said, ride the wave media on that account. We're posting all about Kobe. Uh, I, and I hope, when you're listening to this, I hope that people posted stories about him, their takes about him, videos, highlights, anything. Uh, because a lot of these NBA players that you root for nowadays have openly admitted it, and you saw it this past year, are in the league because of Kobe Bryant. Because of him. They want to be Kobe, especially a guy like who was in the Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum, who's been openly saying that. So... Mm-hmm. It just, if you're a younger, a, a, a younger kid that's listening to us or you're, you're kind of new, like I'm not crapping on your age, but we're, we're trying to give you like, this is who Kobe Bryant was. This is why you see some of the players in the NBA today and, and the impact that he's had uh, on, on the current, on the current product. And it's, it just, it's absolutely, like you said, it's absolutely, you know where you were when it happened it's sad. It's going to stick with you. And I, I, 
and although it's one year, I'm gonna, I'm very interested to see how it, his life is celebrated by everybody uh, on Tuesday. Um, I do hope that the NBA does something over the next couple of years to make sure that his legacy is always, always honored. Like his legacy always needs to be honored and remembered. I just hope it's not five years from now. And it's, oh, it's the five year anniversary and that's it. I want, I like, I know they tried doing something in the all-star game, but that, that's bullshit. Like, I don't want that. I want they, something. They named the all-star that, MVP trophy after that's, that. I, I think that's, I, no one cares about the all-star game. Sorry. I, I'm like, I, I want something. I want something that's more meaningful than just an all-star MVP where an all-star game on a Sunday, it's no one plays defense. They're just fucking chucking up points. And it's just give. I want something that is an award that's earned by a player for an entire season, not just some middle middle game like that. I like that. But um, I think the lasting legacy that Kobe's going to have on me is he is a champion. He has the best shoes in the game and he was the perfect rival. But um, absolute perfect rival, perfect rival. I think that I don't I really don't think there's a better way to put that um, just because like you like Babs was talking about. You love to hate him. Like I like if you asked me five years ago, God, I hated Kobe Bryant. Like he was the guy that like you knew he was going to come in and put 40, put 50 on your head any given Sunday. Um, so the, the, the problem you ran into is, is he would do that over and over. And you only got to see him twice a year um, with basketball, especially. Um, that's why it made those, those 2008, 2011 finals so much fun, seven game series with Kobe and, and you ended up winning one of them. Um, that's, that's a statement to, to the Celtics back then. And, and, and when I went to high school back in 05 to 09, it was always, you take it, Kobe, <laughs> you still just is. always shoot it. Like, you know, everyone, everyone did that. I was in high school five years ago. They still did it. Still everyone think. still does. I, I, I will say this. I stopped doing that out of respect because God forbid I missed the trash can. <laughs> I feel like I shit on his legacy. It's like a curse like, almost. At I, point. Yeah. I legit feel bad. I'm like, you deserve better than that. Kobe. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. So yeah, I just say ball. And then it's, yeah. if it goes in, <laughs> it's fine. but then you're just, that's like Lonzo or LaMelo at that point. <laughs> yeah. I shoot it all weird. But, um, Moving on to, to rivals, we'll wrap up here with some 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 Red Sox news. Red Sox and Yankees, speaking of rivalries, made a trade for the first time in six years, seven years, something something crazy. The, the, the Red Sox, the thing is, the Red Sox and Yankees don't make trades. I, I know a lot of our audience is a football audience. It's like the same thing with the, the Patriots and the Jets. They don't make trades. When they do, they don't work out a lot of the time for either side, but – um, the Red Sox acquired a pitcher by the name of Adam Adovino today to, to bolster the, the rotation. So we'll see how that works out. It was a, just a salary dump for, for the New York Yankees, but we're going to the series. The whole team Red is Sox fixed. Back. Red Sox. I trust Heim Bloom. I I'm the biggest Heim Bloom fan around Heim Bloom and Alex Cora. People forget Alex Cora is the manager of the Boston Red Sox again. That needs to, that people need to understand that that's a real thing. And the Red Sox are going to be successful again. Red, Cora knows how to get the most out of his players. Cora is now working with, with two guys from the Dodgers and Kike Hernandez, new addition to the Red Sox and Alex Verdugo, <laughs> who's going into his second year with the Red Sox. So Alex Cora is going to get a lot out of those guys. We still got a few um, household names, household Red Sox names on the trading block, like, like Andrew Benintendi, rest in peace or, or Michael Chavis. JBJ. Exactly. JBJ's all but gone at this point since we only have $5 million to work with now, but um, I trust. We also, curr- we also currently have 42 people on our 40 man roster. Yeah. That's, like that's, that. that's so not yeah, ideal Bloom's, going into the season. Bloom's got some, some more moves to exactly. make. Uh, I don't, I don't think he's done enough yet to kind of fix our team. Right. But um, he's putting the bits and pieces, uh, but not the big, splash right. i don't know if there's a splash coming i don't think there is i i think but- there might be i think the, the splash is i've like the rumblings around are that andrew benintendi's played his last game in a red Sox uniform so if someone were were to leave that's towards the top of um that 40 man roster like a benintendi type who was supposed to be your leadoff guy who just has, he struggled recently and he even posted like an 056 batting average in the, in the uh the 2020 season even though he only played half a dozen games um i think that i think ben and is likely going to be one of those guys who who's off the 40-man roster here in, in the next few weeks leading up to spring training yeah so let me clarify when i say splash i mean no big huge right. trade like that, acquisition. Uh, that makes us a contender this year right what w- the reason why a bloom is here is 
he can build a farm system and he can find young pitching talent. Look at the Tampa Bay Rays. Right. The they Tampa Bay were, Rays. There were two games from winning the World Series, and that's the team yeah. Bloom built. Tampa Bay Rays play in a shit stadium where no one goes. They have $50 million to spend a year, and he's putting together contenders every year with no money. Yeah. And, and, and that was one of my things. I remember when we got him and, and they let Mookie go. I'm like, give Mookie $300 million and d- just build – the the Rays team with the other 50 million still hurts though. Uh, right. But then like we could be good. But but no, honestly, like the the thing that people have to understand with, with Bloom is it's not the Chris Sale, it's right. not the the JD Martinez, it's not the the even the uh Manny Ramirez signing. That's that's not the way this Red Sox team is gonna work. <laughs> we have five this, million dollars to work with and no roster room. <laughs> right. This team is is going to be built the way we got Ben Attendi, the way we got Devers, exactly. the way we got Bogey, the, the way we got JBJ. It's going to be, we're going to build up the farm. We're going to build up young arms. But the thing is, when these guys are in Tampa and next year, you know, oh my God, wow, this guy is really good. Where Tampa can't afford them, we're going to be able to afford these guys. And that's going to be where the difference is because Bloom can build a can build a roster. He can he can find mm-hmm. forty baseball players to make a quality team, and now he's got money to spend on them when they come to fruition and it's time for contract negotiation. So, don't expect anything big happening this year or even next year, but soon, soon, Red Sox fans, it's gonna soon. Be fun. Like Brendan, to Brendan's point, you have your coach that when you need to make a game decision on the line, you can trust Cora to do it. And I'd go, to, I would go to the grave with Alex Cora. Alex yeah. Cora could be the manager for the next hundred years. I hope he is. Me, Alex Cora, Marcus Smart, we're good. We'll take over the world. <laughs> exactly. That's a, <laughs> that's a great a, big three there. Is there even a schedule out yet for the MLB? There is, yeah. Okay. So yeah, the MLB schedules come out like two, three years in advance, and the MLB is looking like it's going to be playing their 162 game season hopefully as long as spring training starts on time so if anybody wants to come down for spring training come holla there's a anyone wants to come out of spring training there's a bet for you i am so desperate to go to anything for sports i cannot wait to go to opening day for the socks at fenway i'll just be i don't care if it's 40 degrees outside i want to go i'll I'll go i'll go with you need to be there babs Babs, what, what the fuck is 40 degrees i didn't know degrees went that low (laughs) <laughs> it's 40 degrees out here in Phoenix right now. It's crazy. It hailed today. It, it, it was like 80 today in Tampa. Yeah, it was something. 80 degrees today in Tampa. Sheesh. I wish I got to come back, but uh, we'll wrap <laughs> up here. Uh, we'll move on to, to final thoughts. Babs, you want to, you want to start us off here? Uh, my final thought is uh, more for Jay. Congratulations living down in Tampa. Cause everything's just happening down there in the sports world. And, um, I hope that although that you are not supporting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, and I know that you're not supporting Tom Brady, you are and you aren't, but Ish. whatever. Ish. Um, Fine line. I hope that you enjoy the Super Bowl uh, two weeks down there. Now I know they're not the teams are not coming. They're not supposedly coming in. There's already one team down there because they're hosting it. <laughs> but I do hope that I see over the next couple of weeks is that you grab a camera, you grab a microphone. And you might want to go interview a couple Bucks fans out there. Patriots turned into Bucks fans. I think there's some content there that you can expose uh, a couple people. I, I, I want to see something. I, I hope that there's some sort of content that comes out of it while you're down there. Yeah. I'm not going to waste the fact that I live in Tampa and the Super Bowl is down here. Uh, it's just, it's too good. Uh, my, my guy, Justin Zola, president of the Nashville Pats fan, will be here next Wednesday. So there will be content. There will be Bud Lattes flowing and uh, ride the wave fans, Boston Big Three fans. Uh, stay tuned because Drunk Jay the Pats fan will be not in the Super Bowl, but at the Super Bowl. And I will be downtown Tampa. I will be at the convention center. I will be down in Ebor. I will be down on the River Walk, and I will be talking to people. Are, are, I want to know now, because you're probably not going to be on here next week. Next week's going to be the return of Tyler Miller. 
Who are you picking in the Super Bowl? Kansas City or Tampa Bay? With my brain or with my heart? Both. Uh, both of them you can answer. Uh, my brain says uh, Chiefs. Uh, my heart is still... That's why I didn't watch the NFC Championship game because I just I can't root for the Bucks, but I can't not root for Brady. It's just it's just how it is. I know what you mean. I was like cheering when he would make a throw. Like when he threw that the throw the to end end the first half, I was like I was giddy. But like, oh yeah, that's, that that was awesome. That's aggressive, yeah. Tom Brady. Well, yeah, Brady doesn't have a, a sack ball, or something. So I don't even I don't know care. how he did that. Like when when Tampa's defense was out there, I, I didn't care. I was if they got a sack, they got a sack. I didn't care. I want Tom Brady out there. That's all I want to watch. But my final thought, if someone tells you that Tom Brady's not the GOAT, you slap them. Hard. You, you slap them and you tell them Boston's big three told you to. You tell them that <laughs> common sense told you to. Tom Brady is one of the most dominant athletes of, our, of all time. Not even just in his sport. In all sports, you look at the guys that have dominated. It's Tom Brady at the top of them all. It's going to his 10th Super Bowl. There's nothing left to say other than that. But uh, and 10. No, 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 you, first of all, you can't just gloss over that. You can't 10. just say you can't just say like, oh, Tom Brady's going to his 10th Super Bowl. Like that's not that, 10 that sentence. Super Bowls. That Tom sentence, Brady's more likely to make the Super Bowl in a healthy season than 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 Steph Curry is to make a jump shot. It's bananas. <laughs> you can't say Tom Brady's going to the Super Bowl and have that sentence end with a period. There has to be seven <laughs> exclamation points at least. At, you know, the, put one exclamation point for every Super Bowl he's won at the end of that fucking sentence. It's unbelievable. And it's, and it's not just in, in although he kind of has like a super team, it's not just the fact that, oh, he only played two games and got in there. I mean, just think about a couple years ago. He had to go to Kansas City and win that game, right? Think about this year, three straight road games against it's Breeze, crazy. against He Rogers. beat Breeze and Rodgers on the road. Like, yeah. That, MVP, that doesn't happen. Rogers on the road. MVP if someone Rogers told you that would happen, the they think you're crazy. And they still had a home field advantage, the Green Bay, because there was a pretty good amount of fans in there. Like there was, there was fans in that stand. So there's no excuses there. So you got to give credit. I, and I, I will agree with you, Brendan, real quick, is that Tom Brady's motivation right now, uh, this year could be, oh, I left the Patriots, so I want to prove it. His motivation going forward for the remainder of his career is to be truly the greatest athlete of all time, better than a Muhammad yeah. Ali. Better than Michael Jordan, better he than made, any uh, Tiger Woods, and any 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 athlete that you can think of that the first name that pops in your head, he wants to be Tom Brady. You just say the word athlete, he wants to say Tom Brady. Tom Brady's the first words that come out of your mouth. When you you want you want a, something crazy? I've been thinking about if he's still doing this, he might not retire next year. No, he's not. Oh, he's not. To, he's not. That's insane. He's, I, so, so, he's only 44 so, next year. He already said he's going to 44. 45. Why not? So so another thing, too, is he, he's got a business, and it's TB12, all right? If the longer he goes, the more that he's going to sell that. More people are going to really want to buy into that. They're just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if he's doing it 45, 46, 47, 48, he is going to play till he's Dude's 50. found the fountain of youth. He's got but those the, herbs oh, me and Jay were sipping on. How old is uh, Drew Brees? 41. And his arm is shot and he's retiring. And he's, and he, I mean, he's been shot and he's retired. And Tom Brady just threw 40 touchdowns with a brand new team. And had a, had a few deep balls that people say you can't throw. But, yeah. but, but here's the thing. And I actually want to say this because Jay's here. Um, oh, hi. Hi. So when you look <laughs> at Tom Brady, Tom Brady is not going to be a Tampa Bay Buck. So if he's going to play till he's 50, that means he's playing like eight seasons, right? Seven season. He's not going to play it all out in Tampa Bay. Do you think that if you are a franchise and you know that Tom Brady's contract is expiring next year, are you trying to prep your team to get ready to make a pitch to Tom Brady saying, come to our team because this is the receiving core. This is the running backs. This is the cap space. And this is what we can bring into you. Example, San Francisco 49ers. Say they cut ties with Jimmy G this season. Say they're like, we're going to tank. We're going to put everything into the effort to make sure that we can get Tom Brady the following year. Come to your home team that you grew up on, but we're going to have these receivers. We can afford this in free agency. We can afford that, this and that. Do you think teams are going to start doing that? No. Absolutely. I think, I think if he stays, I think if, if he does keep playing, he's staying in Tampa. No, I, I, they can't I, keep I, that I, I, I will say this. And I was going to say it before you brought it up. But if I'm the owner or GM of the 49ers, I'm 100% doing that. Any other team, 
Mm, probably not. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean, so, but but then so say if he goes to San Fran and, and he might in in terms of San Fran with Tobby, I know that he's got it nice down living in Tampa and stuff. He wants to live in Cali. Like he wants to be on the West Coast. You still get the good weather out there. And I think that even if I can see, team, I, I would do it if I was one of the LA teams as well. Yeah, the uh, Rams or or the Chargers. Chargers right? have their quarterback of the future though. Both of them do really. But yeah, but if you're gonna get Tom Brady, <laughs> Tom Brady puts asses in yeah. seats. Yeah, he sells I a lot of jerseys. Even, I think makes a lot of Las, money for your franchise. I I think even Las Vegas could be another team if they don't really believe in car cars. Time's almost up, and they can have a couple pieces away. And maybe and maybe Tom Brady says, "Hey, they have John Gruden there." I would John, Gr- John Gruden would never want to coach Tom Brady. Just, but these are things that we got to think about going forward. Yeah. All right, that's that's the beauty of podcasts. We we don't have any time <laughs> limits. We don't have any constraints. We can just just keep talking as long as we final want. thought turns into 10 final thoughts <laughs> exactly yeah. we'll wrap it up here uh episode 90 of Boston's oh, okay jay Big jay doesn't three. get a final thought fuck jay, jay you're the it. guest here you don't get a final <laughs> thought. you already had your final thought <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in episode 90 boston's big three bruins are still good at hockey take care time mass effort